Virgil van Dijk is regarded as the best center back in the world by men, and this has been the case for some time now. Virgil van Dijk is the best center back on the planet right now, easy. Nowadays, conversations surrounding him mostly focus on where he places on the all-time list among the greats of previous eras. I, I think he's the best centre half of all time. Yeah, I just don't. When Liverpool signed him for an eyebrow-raising price of 75 million pounds in 2018, many scuffed at them. But now, every club is looking for their own version of the Dutch monster. But his journey was not always the easiest, and his path to greatness is a bit unconventional. So in this video, let's look at his story and explore what makes him such a great defender. Van Dijk was born and raised in the city of Breda. His first struggle came when he was just 11 years old, after his father worked out on the family. So despite problems in his household, Van Dijk found his solace in football. He joined the Willem Academy and was deployed as a right back. But when he turned 17, Van Dijk grew 8 inches, and due to his colossal frame, he was switched to the center back position. He trained hard to fulfill his dream of becoming a professional footballer. At the same time, he worked as a dishwasher at a local restaurant to support himself and his family financially. His former restaurant manager, recently said this about him when he was asked about Virgil van Dijk. He was a good worker, he would scrub hard and do his job properly. He was training hard to try and become a professional and had joined the Academy of Neighbors Villa. I would often tell him he should wash more pots and stop trying to become a professional player. So when Willem released him, van Dijk didn't sulk and felt sorry for himself. He went ahead and joined Ronigan. He spent a season in their academy before breaking into the first team in May 2011, aged 19. Van Dijk then started playing regularly in the next season, but just as his career was getting started, he faced a scary setback as he found himself being very sick. But neither the club doctors nor the hospital staff could figure out what was wrong with him. So Van Dijk suffered in agony for days, with seemingly no help at his side. That was until his mother came to visit him. After seeing the dire situation her son was in, she took him to another hospital. Luckily this time the doctors here quickly diagnosed him with a burst appendicitis that has caused him peritonitis and a kidney poisoning. Van Dyke later described his recollection of that time with these words. I looked dead in the eye and it was a terrible experience. For the first time in my life, football meant nothing to me. My mother and I were both praying to God and to be honest, we were discussing various scenarios. At one point, I had to sign this document. It was a will. If I would die in the hospital, part of my money would go to my mom. But thankfully, Van Dyke underwent a successful life-saving surgery. He spent 13 days at the hospital, where he lost over 30 pounds of his body weight. At first, he even struggled to walk, let alone playing football. But after months of grueling rehabilitation, Van Dijk finally returned to his best physical shape. He then spent another season at Ronnegan, and he was making a name for himself in the Eredivisie. So naturally, he hoped that one of the top Dutch teams would move for him, but a move never materialized. Out of desperation, Van Dijk contacted Mark Overmars at Ajax, telling him his desire to play in Amsterdam. But Ajax rejected his approach, and instead signed Mark van der Hoen from FC Eintracht. So after realizing that none of the top Dutch teams wanted him, he turned his attention abroad. And in June 2013, Scottish giant Celtic signed Van Dijk for 2.6 million pounds. In a 2016 interview with Times, Van Dijk said this regarding his unconventional move to the Scottish league. The road I have been along has not been a typical pass for a Dutch player. Normally the road would be from Hornigan to a big club in Holland and then to a big club abroad. For example, Luis Suarez came to Holland and went from Hornigan to Ajax to Liverpool. For me, the bigger clubs did not want to touch me. Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV and AZ were not too sure about me. We needed to make a decision. Wait for them or go to Celtic and hope for the best. Their loss was Celtic's game. And it was here where Van Dijk significantly improved his game. He even added free kicks to his game during his time at Celtic Park. 
Van Dijk spent two seasons with Celtic winning the league title in both. He made the Scotland PFA Team of the Year in both seasons and was also nominated for the Scotland PFA Player of the Year twice. During the 2015 summer transfer window, several English clubs were interested in bringing Van Dijk to the Premier League, but it was Southampton who succeeded in signing the Big Dutch for a reported fee of £13 million. This made him the most expensive Dutch defender since Yapstam. Van Dijk quickly adjusted to life in the Premier League and displayed eye-catching performances, and by the end of the season, he was named Southampton's Player of the Year both by the fans and his teammates. After witnessing his performance levels, Southampton were quick to tie him down to a new six-year contract, after which he was named club captain midway through the following season. Southampton reached the League Cup final that season, but Van Dijk missed the final due to an ankle injury, and Manchester United won the final after a thrilling game. After the season ended, the top English clubs such as City, Chelsea and Liverpool were looking to sign him. Liverpool approached Van Dijk without the knowledge of Southampton, but after hearing about this meeting, Southampton took Van Dijk off the market, despite him handing in a transfer request. At first, the club were willing to sell him that summer, but after hearing about Liverpool's illicit approach, they were furious, so Van Dijk was told he would continue at St Mary's the next season. Liverpool hoped that Southampton would be more willing in the winter window, as Van Dijk was keen on the move to Merseyside. The Saints were now willing to sell him, but they slapped a 75 million price tag on him, a 25 million increase on his price tag six months ago. After having received a huge sum from Coutinho's move to Barcelona, Liverpool didn't hesitate to splash the cash on Van Dijk. So Van Dijk signed for Liverpool on New Year's Day of 2018 becoming the most expensive defender in history in the process. It has to be said that many doubted if he was worth his hefty price tag, but he would soon silence his doubters. He made his debut four days later in an FA Cup tie versus their local rivals, Everton. Van Dijk scored the winning goal of the tie late in the game. He formed a new look defense partnering with Dan Lovren. His impact was immediately felt, especially in the Champions League knockout as Liverpool reached the final that year. But Real Madrid beat Liverpool 3-1 in the final after a horrific display from Liverpool's goalkeeper. Despite only playing half of the season's Champions League games, Van Dijk was named in the Champions League squad of the season. In the following season, Van Dijk showed everyone his words as Liverpool mounted a historic title challenge against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. Liverpool also made their way to the Champions League final for the second season in a row. While City beat them to the title by a single point, Liverpool defeated Spurs in the Champions League final, lifting the prestigious trophy for the first time since that night in Istanbul. Van Dijk not only contributed with his elite defending, but he also had 10 goal contributions in all competitions. He was awarded the PFA Player of the Year for his phenomenal displays that season. But the accolades didn't stop there, he was then named the Best Player of the Year by UEFA. He was also nominated for the Ballon d'Or and made the top three alongside Messi and Ronaldo. Eventually, Van Dijk finished as runners-up behind Lionel Messi, with only seven points separating the two in the pole. Liverpool made a phenomenal start to the 2019-20 Premier League season, winning 26 of their first 27 games, opening up a 22-point gap between them and second-place City. They went on to lift the league title after 30 years of wait, amassing 99 points in the process. It was another trophy for the collection after winning the Club World Cup in the Super Cup that same season. But the following season brought Van Dijk's biggest hurdle since joining the Reds. In a Merseyside Derby game in October, a challenge by Jordan Pickford forced Van Dijk out of the game due to injury. It was later determined that he had torn his ACL and that he would miss 6 to 12 months, effectively ending his season. The defending champions struggled without him and scraped a fourth place finish in the last few days. Van Dijk returned fully fit the next season and Liverpool competed in all fronts dreaming of a historic quadruple. They beat Chelsea both in the League Cup and FA Cup finals via penalty shootouts. But in the Premier League, Liverpool yet again lost the title to Pep City by a single point. Despite this, Van Dijk was named in the PFA Team of the Year for the third time. Now with the dream of the quadruple crushed, 
Liverpool hope to beat Real Madrid in the Champions League final and inflict their vengeance for 2018. But they lost another final to Real Madrid yet again, with a single goal from Vinicius Jr. being enough to crown the Los Blancos champions for the 14th time. The 2022-23 season turned out to be a disappointing one, as Liverpool finished fifth, failing to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in seven years. And it was during this season that Leeds United beat Liverpool at Anfield, ending Van Dijk's incredible 70 games unbeaten run at Anfield in the league. During the course of the season, a lot of people started to say that Van Dijk was past his best. But boy were they proven wrong. Van Dijk came back strong as ever in the next season, as Liverpool aimed to challenge for the league title yet again. He is currently the undisputed best center back in England and Europe, and it is yet to be seen if he can help bring another Premier League title to Anfield in Klopp's farewell season. But what makes Van Dijk so incredible? He is rapid, enabling him to catch up to any of the speedy attackers. He can place the ball with pinpoint accuracy with either of his feet. He's a specialist in 1v1 situations. Aerially, he dominates in his own box or the up positions. His physical frame enables him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any attacker. On top of that, he makes anyone playing next to him significantly better. It is truly incredible that he has everything you need from a center back in today's game. So much so that he has now become a blueprint for all center backs. With most teams trying to have their own Van Dijk with some failing miserably and others succeeding to a degree. But at the moment, there is only one Van Dijk in world football. And regarding where he ranks in the all-time list, I'll leave that to you. So make sure to leave your opinions down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to help out the channel. Until next time, see ya.